the this is gonna be page 13 let me see if I can get a highlighter here this is gonna be page 13 of our notes and that's a one three and the way I like to introduce how humans have messed up the environment because if you go to page 13 it says human impact on the biosphere um, I like to use Family Feud I'm not sure if you've seen Family Feud it's not one of my favorite game shows that I've ever watched uh, the one thing I do like about Family Feud, though, is the very end. If you've ever seen the end of Family Feud, they do this thing where they ask you these really quick questions, and you have to give an answer that the majority of people that they survey have given. So they'll say something like, um, name a fruit that starts with an A, and you would think to yourself right away, apple, right, or apricot, or something like that, and that would be like one of the highest ranked answers. But then eventually like everyone says something dumb during this part like they'll say name something you find in a bathroom and a lot of people would probably be like um uh toilet paper but then you know eventually some people say like plunger and stuff like that but i'm gonna see if i can i'm gonna ask it like this can you think of the number one way in which humans have ruined the environment and I'm actually going to scan through here and I'm going to pick somebody completely at random. You don't know who it's going to be. It could be anybody. But I'm going to, oh, look at Drew Manley looks like he's eating something good. Drew, can you hear me? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Drew, you can hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. What are you eating? Those look like Lucky Charms. Yeah, they are. Nice. You know, some would say that they're magically delicious. Yeah. This is my right. third bowl. <laughs> With the amount of sugar you're ingesting, you're relatively calm. Drew Manley, can you so, name one way in which humans have messed up the environment? The spray bottles? What spray bottles? Spray bottles of what? I don't know. Like, didn't they put a hole in the ozone or something like that? <laughs> Pollutants. <laughs> I'm muting you. Yes, you're correct. Pollutants that have ruined the ozone layer what will it be oh hold on a second i gotta get my actual pointer here let's see here ready number one answer it's the number two answer all right we're going out of order kids we're going out of order get ready we can't say pollution or spray bottles they make us feel bad about ourselves you know what we say technology oversight so this is good this is number two just make sure we're on number two Right, if you're writing stuff down now and you're like finally we're writing something down it's been about seven minutes it's number two technology oversight and if you take a look there's quite a few things here there's quite a few things here oh i don't want a laser pointer we have like several things here for technology oversight so let's go through this really quick obviously we know pollution's horrible um here's some fine pictures of pollution that's terrible right they come over here uh, there's the, uh, the, I'm not sure if you guys remember the BP oil slick that occurred, the BP oil slick that you could see from outer space when like millions of gallons of crude oil escaped uh, into the uh, Gulf of Mexico. That was terrible. Um, but one of the things that we were talking about is sprays. And if, and if, you're, if you're on number two, um, and I want to make sure, oh, my kids are upstairs and they're fighting like crazy. Holy smokes. Um, but what happens is this, if you, if you go into, if you take a look at this, one of the ones, and we're on number two, this is just so you know we're on number two right here. Um, one of the things that you guys should know is definitely global warming. And you should know and that CO2 and CH4 trap solar heat. So if you're wondering where to put this uh, tiny, or this little stuff in the rectangle, I would put it in that box next to technology over for number two. So we're kind of going out of order here, right? So global warming, CO2 and methane trap solar heat. I can see Ryan, Man, uh, in, uh, Drew Manley. I can see Brene Potasiewicz. I can see uh, Emily DiPietro and Nate Buff. It looks like they're writing. So I will wait till they're done writing before I advance to the next slide. So global warming, this is underneath number two, CO2 and methane trap solar heat. And I don't go over global warming a ton because you guys should know that the burning of fossil fuels is creating an invisible blanket in the atmosphere. And that is allowing sunlight to come through, heats up the earth, but the heat can't escape. Um, it's like the thing that if I said to you that I was going to take my dog and I was going to put my dog in my car and I was going to drive to a shopping center and leave her in the car with the window shut on a really super hot day, people would lose their mind. And rightfully so. 
Why? Because what happens in the car is what's happening here in the atmosphere. Light comes through and heats up the air inside the car and it can't escape. So we have to crack a window for the, for the dog. That's what's basically happening here for global warming, with the exception that we can't crack a window. All right, this is also underneath number two. All right, this is underneath number two. So Andrew Manley is, is giving a lot of stuff for number two here. We're talking about acid rain now. If you take a look at where you live, you're like, I live right here. That's correct. And if you actually look down at our key, it's one of the worst areas for acid rain, right? It's one of the worst. And if you're like, figures, New York stinks. We got the most coronavirus. We got terrible taxes. It's things living in New York. Well, actually, we're not to blame. Believe it or not, the power, not the power, power plants, the car plants that were right here um, were creating this, uh, these pollutants that would come over towards us on this other side. So one of the things you might want to put in, this is also underneath number two, acid rain, sulfuric and nitric acid form in the atmosphere. Um, sulfur and nitrogen get up in the atmosphere. Um, like I said, like the car plants out in Detroit, Michigan, and the factories out in Michigan. And then, of course, our weather generally goes west to east. I'm sure an earth science teacher would say, actually, it's southwest to northeast, but whatever. Um, but acid rain is sulfuric and nitric acid. And if I go through this too fast, you can always watch the replay and write these down. All right, so we're still on number two, but believe it or not, number two is our biggest chunk. Okay, so Drew Manley originally said, um, spray bottles and hole in the ozone layer and so far we haven't seen it yet i talked about acid rain and i was talking about global warming the next one is huge it's the hole in the ozone layer correct you know what happened back in the day oh man man i used to have a crush my ear my all back in the day from full house nobody ever saw full house do you guys know that big max used to come in a styrofoam container. Well, guess what? Uh, those things would cause, whoa, holes in the ozone layer. And thankfully, this these, the 80s hair is gone. And thankfully, because it looked terrible then, everyone looked horrible back then. And thankfully, these styrofoam boxes from McDonald's are gone as well. But the hole in the ozone layer is from what we call CFCs, which are chloral floral carbons. Get rid of all that kind of thing. And the hole in the ozone layer it was actually above Antarctica. And I'm not sure if you know what the hole in the ozone layer, protect, or the ozone layer, what it does, but the ozone layer protects us from UV radiation. The fact that you can go outside and not get fried to a crisp is, uh, <laughs> is because of the hole, is because the ozone layer is helping us out, but that hole is gonna cause more problems. Um, I'm not gonna go into the science of chemically how chlorofluorocarbons cause this problem, but the good news is this, we don't have as much styrofoam and we don't have as much uh, hairsprays as we did back in the day, right? Okay, so moving along, our last one underneath number two before I unmute somebody is, the last one's called eutrophication. And what happens with eutrophication, this is kind of a long one, but this is basically what, it, if you're wondering like, well, why is it bad to put poop into a water supply? Um, it causes decomposers to increase, which are in turn going to use a lot of oxygen. Now, I am not going to go through an in-depth explanation of eutrophication. It's not because I'm lazy, it's just because I want to save time. There is a, there's an excellent, excellent video on YouTube that I will post to Twitter and remind that goes over eutrophication in two minutes and it explains it way better then I can explain it. But basically what it does is it causes dead lakes because we have less oxygen. Because if, just think about this, if you're gonna put poop in a pond or fertilizer in a pond, um, the decomposers are gonna increase and because they're aerobic, they're gonna use up all the oxygen. All right, well, guess what? We are going to head back to our beginning. We have uh, this one here is gone, number two is gone. I'm gonna mute somebody, unmute somebody, see how well people have been paying attention. What we got here? Let's see if I see your face. Nate Powell, can I pick you? Raise your hand if I can pick you. You sure? Hey Nate, how's things? Hold on a second. Huh? Okay, can I hear you, can I hear you now? Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? 
Yeah, I can hear you. I'm assuming that you're watching this from um, Florida or Jamaica or something like that. Is that correct? <laughs> no, no. Are you watching this from Whitesboro? Yep. I'm at oh, my that's, bro. <laughs> that's, uh, that's unfortunate. So uh, yeah. here's a question for you. Can you think of a way humans mess up the environment that does not involve pollution? Not involve pollution. Yeah. So, oh. so you can't say pollution. Um, Are you like, Googling it? No, no, I'm not. Like building. Building what? Like cutting down like forests for like a. Kaboom! I just muted you because you're a perfect answer right there. Ready? Let's pick the number four answer. Just kidding. The number one answer. Just kidding. The number five. Just kidding. Number three, make sure we are on three. It is, we can't say cutting down forests. That makes me feel bad about myself. We can't say that. It's poor land management. I didn't know that ripping down a forest and putting up a strip mall would cause any problems. Whoopsie. Didn't know that was going to be an issue. You see how they sugarcoat it a little bit with like this poor land management? I didn't know that ripping down the rainforest and putting up just a wheat field or a cornfield was going to cause any issues. My bad. Okay, so poor land management. We're going to go through this uh, relatively quick, uh, hopefully, because we have three more to do. Um, so here you go. Here's your slash and burn technique that we have of cutting down the rainforest. Um, if you take a look at Brazil, whoa, not know what happened there. Uh, wow, that is definitely not what I want. That's huge and, and not. At all. There we go. Okay, so if you take a look at Brazil, Brazil has, uh, what do you call it, changed quite a bit uh, in terms of its deforestation in the last 100 years. They've ripped down a considerable amount of that rainforest. So we're going to write down deforestation. And one of the things that we can put down is uh, with deforestation, this is by the way, is for number three. This is for number three, poor land management. We're going to write down lose, then a very important term to know, bio diverse look at me writing sideways because i don't know how to write um losing biodiversity that's l-o-s-e looks at the i gotta put my other parenthesis down here um biodiversity so biodiversity is like when you're walking through the forest and you have like all these different animals and plants and fungi and all these different things and then you tear that down and you put up a cornfield you just lose biodiversity bio means life and diversity means variation um, another one that we might want to put down is, I always love this picture. It's always kind of cool. It's not a real photograph, but it's like an artist's rendition of what New York City looked like before the way it does now. Obviously, nobody has an aerial photograph of New York City, but you can see the clear difference between at one point what was a considerable, you know, forest extension into now this massive city that is crippled. I'm not making a joke, but uh, crippled with a, a fairly serious disease. Um, but urban, they call this urbanization, and urbanization is just going to cause habitat loss. And, you know, look, man, I, I don't know what to say. Like, should I sit here and criticize people for building homes? I, I live in a home, you know, so I can't say, you know, whatever. Like, when I was a kid, the, the neighborhood that I live in, right, the neighborhood that I'm sitting in right now when I was a kid, uh, was all like four wheeling trails and ponds and woods and stuff like that, and they ripped that up to put up a uh, put up a, a, a housing development. When I was a kid, uh, there were uh, all these apple orchards over in the New Hartford area, and now it is a marquee cinema and a sweet frog and all these other places. And you know, I don't know. It's hard to say. Like, do I love Best Buy? Yep. Do I love? Do my kids love Five Below? Yep. But when I was a kid, that was all obviously all expansive. Uh, parking lot or I'm sorry not parking lot it wasn't parking lot when I was a kid it was uh, the woods all right so ready that is going to be a boom the number three answer